cannot leave public health, the public's interest, in the hands of corporate executives. Jane Fonda has lived a remarkable life. She's an acclaimed actress. I, I want to be your friend. This man, you come around more often? Stretch. The queen of fitness videos. And an outspoken activist. Famously creating a storm about the war in Vietnam. There's no way that, that, that the spirit of these people are going to be broken by bombs. By posing for pictures with the North Vietnamese, earning her the nickname Hanoi Jane. She's also taken on nuclear energy. Although they may be on the defensive, a wounded beast is much more dangerous. And back feminism. Everybody, no matter what gender, has the right to be acknowledged as a full human being. What's motivating her today is climate change. After reading Naomi Klein's book, This Changes Everything, Fonda was yet again inspired to speak out. Quickly volunteering to take part in a rally in BC last month. The eyes of the world are on this area. A vocal opponent of Alberta's oil sands, proposed pipelines, and Arctic drilling. Today, she was in Toronto taking part in a march demanding action on climate change calling for a new way of environmental thinking, justice for indigenous communities, and an economy that works for people and the planet. I sat down with Jane Fonda yesterday. Jane Fonda, what a pleasure to meet you. It's a very big pleasure to meet you too, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm reading about you and I, and, I, and I say, she's back. You're back and you're back on the barricades mm. and you're back fighting. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm wondering what is motivating you at this, at this stage of your career, the stage of your life, to get back out there and fight? It's a wake-up call for civilization. We're at a crossroads, and if we keep going the way we're going, it's going to be a, a real catastrophe. This is not Jane Fonda saying that. You know, what do I know? It's 99% of climate scientists and NASA and even the World Bank are saying w we have to do something or it's going to be a huge catastrophe and the something means we have to stop drilling for fossil fuel expanding the use of fossil fuels we we have the solution it's there they it works and that's renewable energy it's job intensive we can do it we can afford it um, it can put people to work in jobs that are healthy and, and dignified. This isn't a new issue. This is an issue that's been around f for decades. Right. So and, that's and why I'm, I'm just wondering, and, and, and I'm wondering why now that well, you've Well, I've said been part of the climate. Uh, I've been an environmental activist for, for a long, long time. You've been in everything I've been a lot of, in, in a lot of things. Really, it was a combination of when I found out that President Obama gave permission for shell oil to drill in the Arctic, mm -hmm. I, it's like the bottom of my heart dropped out. And, and then I read Naomi's book, and the, the combination of those two things said, I'm tired of sitting around saying, you know, human beings, we, we, we deserve what we're gonna get because it, this is so silly since there is a solution. And I decided I'm not gonna sit around saying we deserve, I'm gonna try to do something about it. I have grandchildren, you know. I, 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 I want them to look back and say, grandma did her best. You know, I, when I, and I look at your, your career and what you've done, and you have been an activist for so long, and I wonder at some point if you just feel, okay, I'm passing the torch. It's someone else's fight now, and, and I can sit back. Why, why do you feel the need to still in, get involved in these, in these causes that are dear to you? Well, part of it is, you know, what I, what I said, I, first of all, I have a lot of energy. I'm almost 78 years old, and yet I still, you know, oh, I'm... I'm, I'm still active. Th thank God I, there's, things can be replaced. <laughs> I, I have, there's a lot of fake parts. <laughs> I'm kind of bionic. But I can still walk to a barricade. I can still raise my voice and make a difference. And um, I just feel that this is, this is really the f first time ever that civilization is at a point where we're either going to face catastrophe or we're going to make a huge transition. This is, this is not an issue. This is every single thing about our lives and our civilization and the species that live along with us in this earth are at risk. And so every single person who can do anything, 
who, can, who are breathing, we're living, our hearts are pumping. We have to put our energy and our voices into this. Everybody, it's a civilizational wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the celebrity has its great sides to it. You know, there's bad sides to it, but the great side is that you can amplify. You mentioned celebrity, and I wonder how you see your role and in a way it almost your responsibility as somebody who has a voice as somebody who has been on the barricades now for decades How, do you feel that this is your responsibility as someone I was writing my memoirs in the um, you know around 2004 2005 and it just and it occurred to me I was writing them I lived in New Mexico at the bottom of a valley and you know, they're at the top of the hill are these things called repeaters, you know, those towers that you see. Yep. And I wouldn't have had cell service down there if it weren't for the repeaters that picked up my signal. And that metaphor, that w became a metaphor to me about celebrity. I'm like a repeater. If, you know, if you're a responsible celebrity, you s can see yourself as a repeater that picks up signals so I can try to pick up the stories from the valley and say, this is what's happening. But do you feel that um, this isn't a conversation that people want to have? We look at the, the, especially in Canada, we're looking at the, you know, our, um, the importance in our economy of, of developing the uh, oil sands. We look at that saying, this is critical to our economy. It's not, it's not a bad thing. This is what's helping float our economy. So do you have a hard time making that point where people don't see this as being something bad, they're seeing that, that this is something that's helping us, not hurting us. The, the modus operandi of the corporations that rely on fossil fuels is they have to keep growing and growing and growing and, they, and, and so they say, no, we need this, we need this. We don't need this, we can't afford it. We can't afford it financially and we can't afford it from a health point of view, us or the animals or the earth. And if the money that was spent doing that, the drilling and the raping of the earth was put into um, developing the fossil, f the uh, the non-fossil economy, we'd be off and running. We'd be f we'd be fine. Let me ask you a question about what do you think about apathy? I think it's pretty sad. You know, it's never been a big majority of apathy that's made the difference. And there's been there have been huge changes in civilization over the millennia, and it's usually a very, very involved, active, diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. And very often they're, they're, they're young people, they're working people, they're indigenous people, the people who have the most to lose make so much noise and, and make so clear their demands that that change has happened. One of the reasons that the, anti that the Vietnam War ended was because there was a remobilization of people in North America who forced Congress to cut the funding to the government in South Vietnam that was, you know, so corrupt and, and um, n you know, not a democratic government. And the war ended. Uh, we, we can do that in, a, in an area that is more vast, and that's climate. As, as I'm seeing here out of my, you know, peripheral vision, this uh, m montage of pictures going by which really sort of pay tribute to everything you've done and the causes that you've been involved in. And I wonder how you look back on that and the, the causes that you have. You mentioned Vietnam War and it's incredible mm -hmm. what can happen when people are mobilized, mm -hmm. when people rise up. When you see this, do you, do you ever fear that that's sort of a that we've lost that, that spirit to get up and fight. That no, that's people, why I'm in Toronto. But are, are there more people who are like, yeah, let, let Jane Fonda do, let, let her fight it. I'm going to sit no, home. I'm, see, the, the thing that I'm, I'm so grateful for my past as an activist because what it does is it, it allows you to be hopeful. And, you know, and when you're my age, what have I got to lose? I've done everything. I've lived many <laughs> lives. I've had a lot of success. You know, <sighs> why not? put my life on the line for something that is this important. What is the key to change? Enough people saying, this is it, I've had it. You know, it's like the network. I'm, 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 mad I can't as remember. Hell. Yeah, mad, mad as, as hell, hell and I'm not gonna, gonna take, take it, it anymore. anymore. And that creates change. 
Do you envision, you, you mentioned you're, you're soon to be 78. Do you, do you envision a day where you, you stand back? <laughs> or, or is it, no, like now it's no. more than ever that you feel I've you need. More than, more than ever because, because there's not much time left yeah. and I want to feel that the time that I have left I use as, as well as I could. You're still passionate about this. What's the alternative? I mean, yeah. I would, I guess I, I also feel a little bit, you know, I feel my father looking down at me. You know, my father, he was Tom Joad. Did you ever see Grapes of Wrath? Mm -hmm. He fought for those workers. You know, he stood up to the bad guys. I'll be all around in the dark. I'll be everywhere, wherever you can look. Wherever there's a fight so hungry people can eat, I'll be there. And he did it in Oxbow Incident and 12 Angry Men. And that was the kind of guy he was, you know. And he never spoke to me or anything. But he made those movies. And they sent a message to me. You want to live a good life, you've got to stand up to the bad guys. Stand up for the people that don't have a voice. Otherwise, you know, when you're old like I am, you, you know, you, you, or at least maybe not everybody does, but I, I spend a good deal of time thinking about I'm, in my death, I'm on my deathbed. And I don't want to be on my deathbed regretting things. And I know that the things I would regret are not the things that I did, but the things that I didn't do. Mm. You know, I want to feel... I, I did every single thing I possibly could as a human being to, to make things a little better. So, you know, that, that's another reason that I, I'm still, I've got fire in the belly.